What's up guys, Parker here. I have a fun and quick video today showing you how to set the time zone of your last refresh date in Power BI service. This is important because you may be using the DAX now function to show the user a last refresh date, but once you publish it up to Power BI service, it's going to switch from your local time to UTC time because Power BI service runs on UTC time. Uh, so this method is going to allow you to spe uh, specify the time zone that you want to show to the user. So it's actually pretty cool. So in Power BI desktop, you can see that our refresh times are the same here. I'm using the now function in the card on the left. So this is just a calculated column now equals now and I threw that into a card um, so it is the exact same as my API call which I'll, I don't want to spoil too much but I'll get into that in just a little bit um, you see it's the same here and once we publish this up to uh, Power BI service so I'm going to publish that up to my workspace and then we are going to hop on over to Power BI service and we go to our data set and we refresh it we are going to see something very interesting happen so now that's refreshed we're going to go to our report and you see that now we are off by a certain number of hours that's because power bi service is looking at this now function in utc time so we're actually four hours ahead of my local new york time so i'm going to show you how you can deal with this and always show um, the specific time zone to your users for the last refresh date. So if we hop over to Power BI Desktop again, um, I already have this set up, but we're gonna walk through all the steps uh, individually. So we are going to query this API called the World Time API. And their website is great because it's very simple and shows you all of these example API calls. So the first one we are going to call is this right here. Basically, it's this HTTP request. If we actually throw this into a new tab, you can see the uh, return we should be expecting this these are all of the uh, time zones that you can call um, with the world time api so we can do the exact same thing in power bi i'm going to open up a new tab real quick and finally i'm going to go to get data and web and i'm going to paste in that same request and this will get us all of our time zones so give that one second to crunch through and here are all of our time zones. I'm gonna call this available time zones. So here's our long list. There are 387 distinct time zones that you can choose from. And then finally, I'm gonna go over to the World Time API again. And this is how you would make a sample API call. So it's basically the same thing. So it's worldtimeapi.org slash API slash time zone slash Europe slash London, for example. So I'm gonna paste that into a tab. You actually don't need the .txt. So I'm gonna copy that and press enter. So this is the current time in London right now. So we can do the exact same thing. We go to Power BI Desktop, we go to Home, New Source, Web, and I can paste this in. I'm actually gonna change Europe London to uh, America, Oh, sorry guys, spell time zone, right? To America uh, slash Denver, because that's where I just recently moved from. And we will be able to get Denver's time zone right now. So there we go. It gives you a lot of information here. So we're going to go through a few steps to put this into a reportable format. But you can see we have the date time right here uh, for current Denver time. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to convert this into a table. Uh, and then we are going to go to transform and transpose. And then finally, we are going to go to home and use first rows as headers. So as you can see, we just went through a lot of steps just to get it into a table with multiple columns. So since you have this uh, weird looking table here uh, where the first column are actually the column headers that we want, we just convert to a table, transpose the table, promote headers, and it automatically changed the type. So that's the, uh, actually if we go to the end, the third to last column is date time and that's the column we're actually after. That's the current Denver time. So we can go ahead and close and apply. Give that a second. And now on this new page, uh, we can throw into a card 
basically Denver's time. So I just created that new query called Denver and use the date time here. So this is the current Denver date time as opposed to uh, we can use the exact same kind of style here. We'll use the same uh, same now function I had used originally. Actually, let's go ahead and create one more just so we don't introduce any confusion here. So I'm going to create a new column on that Denver query. Uh, I'm going to call this DAX now. I'm going to set this equal to the now function. So I'm actually in New York, so this, will, uh, this should be two hours ahead. Uh, of our Denver time. So yeah, 927 compared to Denver's 727. And now if we publish this up, we'll just go through the same step one more time. So we're going to publish this up on the second tab. Replace the data set. Hop on over to Power BI Service. We're going to refresh our data set. Give that one second. Oh, got to update my credentials real quick. It's an anonymous API call, so you don't actually have to do anything. Uh, I'm going to refresh my data set. Hop on over to the report. And on that new second tab, you see that the now function is still looking at UTC time, but Denver is still that same 7.28 a.m. time. Uh, so that's great. We can specify that uh, time zone. It's never going to change. Uh, no matter who's viewing the report from where. Uh, so it's always going to be able to uh, revert to a specific time zone as opposed to reverting to UTC time. So I hope you see uh, the use case for this method. Um, it's pretty nifty given that uh, Power BI service is always going to look at UTC and there's nothing you can do to get around that. So it's pretty easy with just a simple API call. Just again, it's worldtimeapi.org. Uh, pretty quick and easy API to set up. Uh, I'm going to link the uh, PBIX file in the description of this video, so make sure you check that out if you're, uh, uh, if you're having any troubles uh, getting this on your own. So I hope you like this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.